Good morning and welcome to Musician Talks episode 16 and this is Dane Smith and I'm here to talk to you guys today about satisfaction as an artist. But before I get started, be sure to like, share, subscribe and spread this uh, opportunity with anybody who's an artist or creative who wants to learn more information about the music industry or just artistry in general and want to ask some questions or join the conversation. So today's topic is satisfaction and i want to get into how artists are affected by this what your purpose is in it and what to look out for when dealing with it so first how do artists deal with satisfaction well satisfaction is that that like feeling you get when you've completed or uh, met a goal in your life or your career and that feeling you feel is a feeling of closure, sometimes happiness, pleasure, and things like that. And you usually get that, to give you a more tangible example, after a really good performance. The crowd may be, you know, loving your show and things like that. And you may actually be, um, you know, improve, maybe improving on your skill set. Maybe you're getting better at your instrument. <clears throat> you get a level of, set <clears throat> of satisfaction from that. <clears throat> and this can be amazing for an artist, especially if you can control it and you can um, get it consistently. Now, the best part about being satisfied as an artist is the results that garnered that satisfaction. Not necessarily the feeling, because as a person, as a human, you have different things that you may, that may satisfy you. Like an artist that doesn't necessarily perform well may be satisfied with the notoriety they get from their work. We've seen it before where hundreds of people, <clears throat> maybe hundreds of thousands of people will be like, oh, this person is trash. I hate their music. But this person is popular and or getting booked for shows and gigs. And therefore, that particular artist may be satisfied in the outcomes that they're getting. But what is the point of everything you're doing as an artist if not for your own personal satisfaction right so to answer that you would have to look at again your results as an artist so me personally i would prefer people to like me than to hate me or fear me but you can't really control that so <clears throat> where i get my satisfaction from as an artist through my artwork is the completion of projects and just having people even react to my artwork is enough for me because when it comes down to let's say like record sales or the business of music rather I can't necessarily control uh, outcomes but I can definitely control how I set up my outcomes if that makes sense like if I want to sell more records I need to make things that people want to buy and I have to package it excuse me and I have to package it in a way that is attractive but if I'm just doing what I personally like to do those odds are lowered because not everybody would technically like what I like so to reel it back a little bit let's say I misplaced my source of satisfaction in sales knowing what we know now that I do get my satisfaction in just the completion of projects and having people listen in and, and inter interact with my works but let's say I misplaced my satisfaction in the sales. Now, I've already explained that not putting a priority or, you know, uh, setting yourself up to win as it pertains to sales wouldn't set you in good odds with making more sales and being success successful in business. So if I put my satisfaction in my sales and I wasn't putting in the work, then my satisfaction, let's say satisfaction levels, would be lower than what they could be if I had placed my satisfaction in the right places. Now, there is a theory that if you focus on what you enjoy, you can make money from it eventually. But the caveat to that is money doesn't just grow on trees. You've heard that before. 
So in order to make money, you kind of have to make money. You have to essentially facilitate an opportunity for people to be uh, to visibly see your product and to be able to afford and um, purchase your product. But if I'm not doing that and I only get my satisfaction in uh, the completion of projects and just if you just hear my music, then I will suffer in terms of <clears throat> in terms of sales and business success. So it's something to think about as an artist in terms of where you get your satisfaction from. Like it's something to think about in turn and something to think about as an artist to make sure you understand where your satisfaction lies. Because if you don't, you'll be doing a lot of missteps. So let's say what would be the successful <clears throat> the successful model for an artist who is satisfied in their artwork over their business acumen as an as an artist. The successful model of that would be to hone in on that and become so skilled or talented or so unique that what you offer you're not necessarily not necessarily the sole provider but you're the best at what you do so then when it is time for you to you know commit to music sales or music business it's easy for you to make that transition because you're so good at what you do now let's flip it on the other end of the uh, spectrum what if you're an artist that necessarily that doesn't necessarily um find satisfaction in just completion of projects but you find satisfaction in the results you get from good music business a good model for that or a successful model for that would be to again in music you kind of have to still be good at what you're doing honestly it's not even just music you have to have a quality product so you wouldn't necessarily focus on being the best being the most unique being uh the greatest at what you do the most skilled or most talented what you would focus on in this example would be focusing on getting a good enough product and once you have it good enough then we can improve kind of like <clears throat> uh building the plane while we fly but you can improve <clears throat> upon a product as you focus on people purchasing your product <clears throat> now you can raise the odds for that with quantity the more products you have the more chances you have of, a, of someone liking a product that you may have in your uh, catalog or you can focus on what i like to call like the, the the one hit wonder where you can get the perfect album or song down and that's the one but you can go through your uh your business acumen and sales training or experience to get all of that business done off of a really good product so there's there's ways that satisfaction can work on both ends of, of the spectrum i think where artists lie is i think artists have an issue with rather i'd say that artists have an issue when it comes with balancing the two and i i think personally you shouldn't try to balance these two things your satisfaction should lay in either your skill talent and artwork or your business acumen and tangible results that you get from your artwork because in my experience when you try to balance the two you're kind of mis <clears throat> you're kind of misguided on <clears throat> you misguided on identifying your satisfaction most of the time <clears throat> so I've seen artists who get a lot of tweets and views and <clears throat> plays and such like that, that they don't mind the ne the negative critiques on their artwork because of all the notoriety that comes with just viewing it. That can be dangerous for an artist. And here's why, because the human aspect of you is going to want some kind of validation and if everybody you're selling to or a majority of the people you're selling to don't like the product 
if you yourself don't like the product <clears throat> and your expectations for the product isn't something that you actually enjoy, where would you necessarily get your validation from that is honest? It wouldn't, you wouldn't really have any validation because all the, well, not all, the majority of things are <clears throat> that you're hearing are negative. So you would then turn to the people like I've seen in this example, you would turn to the people that uh, don't necessarily have your best interest in mind, but they will agree with you to agree with you. Whereas your best interest, somebody who's in your best interest can tell you, you know, I enjoy what you're doing, but you can improve on X, Y, and Z. Because if there really was nothing wrong with what you're doing, as far as the artwork you're putting out, then the results would show that. And that's not necessarily just sales, which is why you can't find that balance because it's, it's hard for musicians, especially to equate sales to respect. It's, it's hard for musicians. You can do that when you remove artwork. Like if you just work a job and you make more money than someone else, then you can respect it because of the work ethic. <clears throat> but that's not how the music industry sells records. We don't sell records on who's the best, on who's hard, working the hardest, and that's not how this works. I can touch that, touch on that in another episode. But So placing your satisfaction in places that don't necessarily benefit you as an artist can be extremely detrimental, or it can just kind of stagnate you. It can. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a positive thing. Unless you have a team, like a, a record label working with you where you can kind of spin different plates, but eventually you're going to fall to the mercy of your label and not your independent satisfaction. Like you would have to appease the label and the customers first. So <clears throat> how can an artist manage satisfaction? Well, the best way I've understood to do it is identifying first what it is you want from the music industry and what are you willing to give so me personally what i want from the music industry is um transparency a lot more clarity as it as it pertains to um younger artists and just younger in the sense that you're newer to the industry not in age because i've noticed there are a lot of musicians that pick up their first instrument in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And their understanding of the music industry is that of what they've only seen on TV, not necessarily physical experience of dealing with the business of it. And for that, that can be daunting, especially at a at that age, because you kind of don't have time. Like, you're an adult. You probably have things in your life that are already set up and waiting on your attention to get into the music industry and be successful at it, it takes time and effort to put that in, to put forth, which would eventually and essentially take away from what you're already doing. Whereas on the other flip side, if you're younger and you want to do it, it still takes time because of, you know, the skill set, the learning curve. It's the same for the older musician, but the learning curve is that of a child or a teenager at the time. So the, soft skills that an older musician may have over a younger one doesn't really uh, make a difference if they're both not understanding the music industry that they're walking into. And that's kind of what the point of this uh, podcast is. But if both of those musicians find satisfaction in either the business of it or their talent, the odds of their success increases because they have something to work on and they have results that they can um, look forward to and set goals for. So I'll give you an example of the two before I move on. The older musician who's picking up, let's say, bass guitar at 56 years old, if his satisfaction is, I'll flip it just so it can be kind of um, varied. So if this musician who's older wants to pick up the bass guitar in his mid fifties and his satisfaction lies in, I want to make money in the music industry, selling records or writing or whatever he wants to do. This musician can find 
more success in focusing on what he's good at on the instrument and being a being or having high utility as a musician with this instrument that he plays meaning he plays bass guitar but he may not play the best but he is the best asset to those around him so maybe he's <clears throat> found a band that he can play with that they're skilled enough to where his skill level will increase the learning curve they can work with um this musician can also find a position in writing studio performing um teaching if they can learn enough about the instrument themselves and so with that once they get to a certain point that is good enough then they don't have to focus on being amazing or great at the instrument their utility is set so therefore how they price themselves how they market themselves how they brand themselves can be a focus point now because they have enough skill level that they can market they can brand themselves and um essentially build a resume but this is a person who got into it way later in their life versus in the other example the let's say um mid-20s just graduated and wants to um get into the music industry but they find satisfaction in being the greatest musician ever highly skilled most unique things like that so <clears throat> their success in the music industry because they're so young um because the learning curve is a little shorter because they don't have the soft skills so to be receptive to a lot of the soft skills is easier but this younger musician who finds satisfaction in, in their skill set can find success in the music industry by simply focusing on finding uh, or setting up their business to be good enough that they have pretty much a basic platform. I can name a few musicians that have done this and have gotten pretty <laughs> successful, but set up a, a decent platform that they can control. And then once that's set up, meaning they have maybe a, a brand or a website or even just a social media account or a YouTube, um, they can now focus on their skill level, which means they can invest in more lessons, uh, critiques, you can consult lessons and things like that. You can invest in these things for yourself as a musician. So then when you do showcase these things on your platform, the business will work for itself. But mind you, like I said in the other example, this musician has got a good enough business platform to where they're not spending too much time on the business that it's taking away from the time spent on honing their craft. Raises the odds tenfold. Now, let me explain in a third example what I was speaking on about artists not uh, being balanced in their satisfaction and why I think that that can be more detrimental. The balance for it, for me, muddies up your objective as an artist. And if your objective, let's say, if you're a signed artist or a signed musician, your objective is typically and necessarily to sell records. Whereas if you are, let's say, like a, a chamber musician or classical musician, um, a worship leader at a church, or maybe you're an independent busker or things like that, these musicians their skill levels are supposed to be so high that that would bring them uh, income. Now let's take both examples of the musician that wants to be great at music selling, selling, I'm sorry, and the musician who wants to be satisfied in their talent. Um, if the one that's satisfied in their talent thinks that they need to do better in business and obviously they're not satisfied with it or don't get satisfaction from it. So, they don't necessarily want to do it. They're not interested. Um, learning it and getting good at it feels like a chore. So their approach to it is in bad faith already. And it's not coming from a place of um, conquer or maybe like control. Like maybe I will be good at. You know, that's not how they're going into it because they don't get satisfaction from this. But so with that comes an artist who's trying to 
be the best on their instrument and be the best in business, which is something that does not satisfy them. So their approach is going to be uh, a lot of their not their approach, but their decisions are going to be uh, misinformed and mishandled in most situations because of how they view uh, the very business that they're trying to um, there we go the very business that they're trying to take part in. And then on the other hand, the musician who believes in great business and gets satisfaction from that, but they feel that their skills aren't matching up to their uh, ideal price point, let's say, that musician is, is going to approach getting good at the instrument with with no satisfaction from it, with the idea that it's a chore, it's something I have to do to make money, and it's something, honestly, for both of them, if you don't get satisfaction in what you're doing, you're going to try to package it up as though you do. And now you're being dishonest and a whole bunch of things that come with being dishonest can mess you up in the music industry or just in business in general. So that's where you get situations of uh, lip syncers. You get people having stage presences that don't make sense to the music of it. Like you got spaceships and shit flying out of the stage or whatever fire pyrotechnics but you're not good at the skill that you have so that to me is why that keeping a balance in what satisfies you in the music industry can be more detrimental i wholeheartedly believe that you should pinpoint what it is that you know you get satisfaction from learn how to identify these things you may need to have somebody else help you with le figuring that part out because it is a mental thing and getting that learning curve down just as a person but pinpoint exactly what it is that satisfies you as an artist focus on that but keep your priorities in order so as i explained before if your prior if your satisfaction comes from being the best at what you do on your instrument or on your in your skill set and your craft keep your priorities in order set yourself up to win with that meaning all right if you're the best um rapper and you want to prove that by freestyling every day or whatever make sure you have a situation that's business savvy and you have either a youtube setup that's monetized get all the requirements done and just grind it out and it's sent and eventually as you hone your craft and you get better the how youtube will do its magic in terms of the algorithm and you'll get your views and things like that as long as you're you know telling people what you're doing and then on the other hand if you want to have great business keep your priorities in straight as a as a musician like if you you get most of your satisfaction from good business you pro get your priorities in straight make sure your skill level is up there if you're not the musician that's going to sit down and grind out hours on your instrument and reading the the books hire a teacher um join a join an organized group of musicians that either perform often or work together that way when you do step out on your own or with them in a business sense and you know that you know you're good at business it's so much easier to perform in your business sense because your your talent level and your craft is set up and improving with the uh, resources you have and it it makes sense everywhere else like if you want to be a gym trainer no, if you want to be an athlete, you hire a gym trainer. If you want to be a, um, a, a golfer, you hire a coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense. So just understand that as an artist and keep your priorities in order and make sure you understand, meaning you don't have any more questions. <laughs> make sure you understand what it is that you get satisfaction from as an artist. And that's it for today. This was Musician Talks with Dame Smith. I do this every day except for Wednesdays at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern. And like I said before at the beginning, like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation. Uh, tell anybody who's an artist, singer, old, young, wants to learn about the music industry, just has questions. Maybe you're one of those people that doesn't really understand how the music industry works and you just want to pick the brain of somebody feel free to tap in and these videos are on facebook live and 
the Dame Smith Productions Facebook group. But after this, I will be chopping this video up, editing it, and putting it on YouTube uh, the same day. So if you missed the live, you'll catch it on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe there as well. Um, and that's everything. That's all I got for you.